Welcome back to this episode of the Dom Joseph Podcast. It's been it's been about a month, one whole month since we've last uh, had a conversation with one another. Uh, I know a lot of people have had a lot of conversation with with a lot of other people. You know, that's kind of something you do. I mean, I think about how many conversations I have a day, and sometimes I can have four. You know, those are the days I really don't want to do much. Those are the days I'm laying low, hanging out, you know, doing nothing. And then there are some days you have 50 plus. You know, recently, uh, Canoe Journey just happened and a whole bunch of stuff has been going on here in the Northwest. I actually recorded an episode two weeks ago, but you know what? It didn't sound as good as I kind of wanted it to be. Um, it didn't really feel like I was contributing to anything you guys would really be listening to other than Dear Diary. So uh, we're here today with episode, I think it's 168, um, but yeah, it's 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 here. We're almost to 200. It's taken us a little bit. We, we kind of slowed down from 130 to 160. Uh, life just kind of got in the way, and that's it happens sometimes, you know, and sometimes changes happen in life. Um, you know, when after we come out of this song, you know, I've been actually thinking about a lot of the music I've been listening to. Um, I don't know what it is about me being from Seattle. Um, every time grunge comes on, you know, you always got to remind somebody that, you know, they're from Seattle, right? You know, Alice in Change starts playing Soundgarden, uh, you know, Nirvana, Jimi Hendrix. You kind of lean over to the guy to your right. You know, they're, you know, they're from Seattle. Yeah. You know, that's just the Seattle 101 right there. If any four of those bands are playing and you don't tell somebody from they're from Seattle, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, let's, let's get right into this one and uh, we'll start episode 168. So stay with me, guys, and we're going to have a good time. Like I said, we're going to have a good time, and uh, yeah, I like that song because it brings us into like the Seattle vibe. You know, I have other intros that we use here on the pod, and um, I like that because like I was telling you, I've been in this grunge vibe, and I have been, I feel like uh, I've been getting older in certain ways, and I'm not saying I've I've learned everything, Um, but recently, like I'm starting to admire things that I never thought I'd really admire. Um, for the longest time, like I've, I've said this before, I didn't like the color green. I couldn't stand the color green. And I was just like, man, I'm just so much more of a red guy, which I still, red is still my favorite color, but now green, like I said, it's been growing on me. And, you know, I got this Mariners hat to cheer on the Mariners. And you know what else I've been doing ever since I've gotten older is, so I've been listening to a lot more rock and I'm starting to like memorize band members names or like singer names you know i started looking up like who they are and what their names are and you know you start going like this deep dive of like all right who's who's all the members of nirvana who's all the members of alice in chains i'm just using them for example because we were just for talking about them or who's all the members in Soundgarden? garden you start like knowing these things like this is how this is how my brain works So if someone were to ask, hey, Dom, who's your favorite singer? I'd be like, oh, you know, I think Chris Cornell is a pretty good singer. And then people go, oh, who's he from? And then it's like you have that little bit of information that you're just proud of yourself to have. I don't know if anybody else's brain does that, but it's like, or when I was a kid, I would like weirdly remember song names or certain songs on albums just in case somebody said, all right, well, what's the next song next? Like, I would think about these, like, weird situations. Like, if I was in a dark alley and some guy was like, yo, if you don't tell me what the the name of Prince's album is, of him sitting there with the purple background with his shirt off and his long hair and his his mustache, if you can't tell me the album name, I'm going to take your life. I would think that. And, you know, if anyone's wondering what that is, it's I Want to Be Your Lover by Prince. And I think it was 1979 that uh, was released. I could be wrong. But I actually, I think it's just called Prince. But I Want to Be Your Lover, I think, is the featured song on there, like the main song. But um, yeah, that's where my mind goes. I don't know if anyone's brain goes like a certain way, but I've been really thinking about like uh, things like that recently. Uh, But yeah, you know, when you're in Seattle, you got to remind people what's from here. 
you know, you're not from Seattle, if you're not reminding people that Starbucks and Amazon are from here, that Dick's Hamburgers is like top tier in the burger, you know, tiers. And then, you know, also of like Soundgarden, Nirvana and all them start playing Alice in Chains. You got to go up to them and let everybody know that they're they're from Seattle. You know, they're from Seattle, right? Mm hmm. Yep. Seattle we produce a lot of good music here. You know, I think we stack up pretty good. I think Seattle stacks up pretty good against most other cities with music. Uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of like powerhouse cities that produce a lot of talent. You know, you say L.A., New York, Chicago, Atlanta. And um, I'm sure there's a lot of southern countries that produce a lot of other talent. You know, I'm sure there is a lot of places producing talent. And that's what I, I really like when artists really dive into that area and they're from. Because that's usually what they know. And uh, that's really cool to me. But, but yeah, um, I used to think remembering lead singers is hard. But now I just, I think I'm just getting older. So, has anything happened to, like, like that to you? Like that to you? Where you're, like, getting older and you're starting to admire certain things differently. Um, I also think the New Balances, the New Balance shoes, I think the, I don't know, the change up from people hating New Balance to loving New Balance is insane. I, I've i always been kind of a New Balance guy, I'll be honest. Like I thought New Balances were kind of corny there for a little bit. And I, I got on the bandwagon of New Balances again right when Kawhi Leonard started um, repping New Balance. That's when I was like, yep, New Balances are cool again. That's how my brain went. I don't know like when everybody else hopped back on the New Balance bandwagon. Uh, I think it's because like they're kind of diving into their lifestyle brand. But I think when Kawhi Leonard uh, started wearing New Balance, that's when I kind of was like, you know what? Yeah, New Balance isn't that bad. Um, yeah, so what else been going on with me? Yeah, I had a big, uh, had a big moment the other week. I uh, quit my job. Yeah, that was... Um, that was something, you know, and I, I should say, you know, shout out to everything, everybody there who I was there with and all the things I learned. But there comes a time um, when a new job is just the new thing to do and nothing changes if nothing changes type thing. Um, I wish nobody any disrespect in me parting ways, but I think quitting a job you know, I've been wanting to, I would say, probably quit this job for a little bit now. And I'm a firm believer in doing something that you enjoy somewhat doing. <laughs> and because it's like, if you're not trying 100% every time you're going, are you really, like, what are we doing? Like, that's, the time we have here on this earth is so short and to, like, really just phone it in all the time. Like, it wasn't really worth it. And, you know, to be straight up with you guys, because, you know, I could be straight up with you guys now that I'm not at that job anymore. Um, it didn't really go the way I wanted it to in the ending conversation. Um, I think some things were appointed and said. And uh, I don't think I'm going to go back. Yeah, um... That's just the truth. There's not really much drama to it at all. It's just time. It's time for something new. So I don't know if anybody else is going through like a new job thing or they're worried about quitting their job. Um, but I was just throwing my name in and resumes, you know, or on uh, applications and saying, hey, you know, think about me here. And um, I'm really excited about my new job I'm going to be taking up. Uh, I think it's going to give me a little bit more structure. Um, but yeah, again, no disrespect to anybody who I was at the last job with or what they're doing there. It's just, I think my, I'm going a different way. And I think that's okay. And I think people need to realize that going a different way is okay. And um, yeah, I hope everybody else, I, I know how jobs are, man. I know how it is to be there. And you're like, oh, I don't really know if I want to be here much longer. And you start looking for other avenues. And it's hard to f finally just say, hey, you know, it's my two weeks. And I don't want to be here no more. So that was a unique, unique time in the past, this year, I would say it's a pretty prominent um, moment because it's going to chart, start like a new chapter. And I think there's a lot of chapters in people's books and, um, I'm really excited to get this new one going, man. 
Um, but yeah, I don't really want to bore you guys with all the details. And that's about it. You know, uh, if you if you skipped ahead, long story short, uh, quit my job and uh, excited for the new one. Um, that's really the TLDR of that. Too long, didn't read. That's what that is. So if you guys are ever on Reddit and you scroll down to TLDR, now you know what that means. We always try to learn something here. Whew. Um, let's see. Um, there's a lot of stuff I actually wrote down. Um, let's see. I was talking about self checkouts the other day. And the thing is with self checkouts is they're always pretty unique. Um, because you know, there's, there's people there that are buying their whole cart full of things cause they don't like the interaction with somebody at the, the thing or whatever, you know, they just want to do it themselves cause they think they're faster in reality though. You may think you're faster than the clerks at the grocery store, but you never are. Like, even if you have the pair code down and you know what it is, you know what the banana code is because you've pressed it so many times, you know how to weigh things, something's going to scan twice and you're going to have to remove it. And it's going to take some guy to come and scan his ID and then type in like a six digit code. And that's going to take more, t- more time than it would be to just go to a uh, regular clerk. I used to be the person, I'll be honest, I would take my full card of stuff and I would go to the gro- Walmart. And I would buy the full cart on my own at self-checkout. And I, I was kidding myself thinking that was actually shorter. I thought it was actually faster. But you know what? Now I've, I think I'm getting older to the point now where I just go to the person who just, you know, does it for me, the clerk. You know, we're fighting AI a little bit with that, you know, keeping people's jobs in order. But it's really not that much faster. You know, you may think you're getting there faster and you're scanning things way fast. But... In reality, if you mess up, it's going to take you longer than it would have if you just went to somebody. And I, I'd love to hear like the cashier's point of view, like if they like or prefer people going to self-checkout because it's less things for them to do. But I feel like if I was in that position, I'd be like, you know what? I'm working. You know, I'm going to scan all this stuff anyway. And I like to stay busy at work because if I'm not busy at work, man, oh, I start getting bored. Like right now, like without this job, I've been kind of like, dang, what am I going to do for this? Because I, my next job starts next week. I'm like, all right, I got a week off. But I'm like, all right, what can I do? Can I rearrange the living room? When you start getting too bored and you've slept too much, you start thinking about things that you should just rearrange. You know, you, man, I should put the couch over here. I should uh, I should start eating better. I should, um, I should take another nap. Those are like the three things that come to mind. Or, you know, I'm real, I'm real thirsty. I got to eat more fruit. I actually do have to eat a little bit more fruit. But yeah, I'll be honest. The self-checkout is like, I'll be honest. The only way the self-checkout is faster than the only cashier is like if you're buying like 10 or less things and or you want to go to the self-checkout because you're buying like Preparation H or something, you know, and you don't want no one to see what you're buying. And Preparation H, that's not something you really want to like say out loud that you're buying, but of... Let's see. I've I've had to buy preparation H a couple times. Uh, once it wasn't even for me. Once it was actually for a delivery. I used to be a delivery driver, and that was on the thing. I didn't think you could go to the grocery store and buy people ointment, but I had to buy some. I think some older lady, some preparation H, and uh, she got her ointment, and I think her thin mint cookies, and a, what else she, did she get? I think she got like the white cheddar popcorn. And I think a, if I can remember, a sun-kissed orange. I think that was the order I got. I think I got like a ten dollar uh, donation or tip or whatever. So it was worth it. Wor- it was worth it. Um, but yeah, that's the that was something. You know, um, canoe journey was also it has been concluded here in the Northwest. The youth journey to Puyallup. I heard there was a lot of. Uh, I heard there was some drama at uh, canoe journey, and. Um, what I heard, you know, I could share with you guys because this is what I heard. Um, there was a big timer on f- and on Canoe Journey, a big, huge timer, an hour and a half, and some people got a certain amount of times. And there was canoe families that were pretty upset with that because there was this glaring timer why they're singing and dancing. And not to say that the timer was the problem. It's like how they were kind of rushing people through. And I, you know what? I get it. I'm some I'm on both people's sides here. I see that Pialop wanted to get everybody and make sure they had like their set time and everybody got to go at an equal amount of time. I get that. But there are some canoe families that are going to go a little bit longer and some are that are going to go shorter. 
like I don't know, I was in Muckleshoot. I swear people were up there for three hours, for, you know, paddle to Muckleshoot. I'm not saying paddle to Muckleshoot, paddle here, paddle there was better or whatever. But it's cool to go to different journeys and see how things are run. And there was a lot of actually drama within the youth versus the elders too. I'm not necessarily the elders or people who are putting it on. Um, I'm going to leave out tribes here because, you know, just for the sake of argument, there was kids and people that were cut off due to like performances and due to other things. And they had less time on the timer than other people did. So that started a whole thing. Like, why do they get a little bit more than we do and less than we do? So that was a whole dilemma. And there was also the dilemma of people saying, we're doing this the old fashioned way. And this is the traditional way. So we're stopping it or whatever. We're doing this. And then you had the youth who were saying, you guys are saying it's up to us, the youth, to put on this canoe journey or to, you know, this is a journey about us. And you're telling us how to do it. And there was a lot of pushback between the older ways and the new ways that are, I would say, upcoming so because the people were saying, oh, it's closed. We're stopping protocol, at, I think, at 10. It was like 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. And the youth were saying, well, if this was the old school way, like you guys want us to do old school, they would just go all night. So there was a lot of turmoil. No, I, should, I shouldn't say a lot. That's not the right word. I would say there was some turmoil um, that I heard and I wanted to share with you guys the drama because you know what drama drama creeps into the conversation real quick like maybe sentence two or three with my family drama's creeping in pretty quick I don't know about how you guys are but about three or four sentences in you know hi how are you is getting kind of boring you know let me know how much longer your cousin's got his DUI for you know tell me why uh, we can't go to the basketball gym you know, tell me why you can't go to the grocery store down the road on the res because you're afraid of bumping in the who? Why? Why? You know, there's a lot of drama that I think just kind of creeps up. Um, you know, oh, yeah, this guy, uh, yeah, he picked up my uh, crab pot one time. Yeah. And then he dropped it off at my house. <sighs> I didn't need him. To... Yeah, he, he checked my crab pot one time. He said he called me, said, yeah, I checked your your crab pot and he didn't even put any bait didn't even put any bait back in it just let it sit in there he he checked it you know he had bait <sighs> i don't even know why he, he probably caught hella too and he said he didn't but i know he probably did i know where I'm at. i know my pots i know my spots i know they do well for him to just check it and just had the audacity to call me and say he checked my pots and then he didn't even put bait back in it I'm not going to his son's birthday. Nope. I've given his son so many rides to practice. Yeah. He better not ask me to go hunting. I'm not taking him. Yeah, last time I went out hunting, we said he said we're going to go get an elk, and guess what? We didn't even get one. Yeah. Told me to wear all this stuff. He told me to wear highlighter orange and highlighter this and highlighter that. I swear we're up in the mountain. The deer could see us from a mile away. Yeah, I know it's for gun safety and, you know, so no one, you know, thinks I'm an animal. But still, you think a deer can, they're going to see orange from miles away. I told him to give me the camo stuff. Uh, yeah, and then we were out there and he's talking all this whole time. It's four in the, four in the morning. We're trying to hike to the spot to go hunting, and this guy's just talking. We got to be quiet. You know, we're out here in the mountains, and you want to talk and tell us about how your day was, but we're here hunting. We don't talk about that stuff up here. We're trying to find an elk. Your cousin got this tag, and we haven't gotten one in two years. All that talking. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of that, <laughs> a lot of that drama always um, 
I just think it's funny, man. I, I think I've only been hunting once and I did hear a little bit of that. You know, I'm no expert either too. Like when I'm saying all this fishing and hunting stuff, don't come at me and oh, Dom, you, you think you're a hunter. You think you're a fish. Did I once say that? Everybody's always favorite thing to come up and, oh yeah, you really think you're an expert on uh, all that stuff now, huh? Went one time and now you're just talking about it on your pod. Dude, I'm just telling you what I've been through and what I'm what I've learned and what I've seen. If I could tell you, I can I think it's possible, and you know, this is a hard thing for people to remember. It's possible to talk about something without actually doing it. I'll I'll be honest with you on that. Oh. I've never seen you out hunting like me. Well, I've been a couple times and I I'm pretty sure I can get the gist of what you guys probably talk about. Mhm. Or I know I do know hunters who do hunt on or fishermen who do fish um yeah shout out to my cousin darian he uh he brought me out in that fish and that was cool um cousin janae and rob were on there too that was a fun time uh yeah that was uh that was fun what else uh what else has been going on let's check out the the lovely notes here um <laughs> yeah me and my buddy uh oh yeah also shout out to my guy john he uh, had me um, teaching some kids some Coast Salish art and some form line in his uh, Native Academy, Native Academy out here in Washington. Um, we chaperoned them to Canoe Journey. Um, funny story about that. You know, you chaperone a bunch of kids, you're going to learn something. You might learn a new thing, a lingo. You might learn a, a new threshold of patience because that is what happened. You know, you're chaperoning any amount of kids. I would say three plus kids. You're going to be stressed at one point of the day. And we had at least, I think, 20 kids. And these kids, man, when I was, I'll, I'll just start with this as a preface. When I was young and I was chaperoning, you know, someone was chaperoning us, I tried to be the good kid. I'll be honest. But sometimes you weren't. And, you know, you'd start hanging out with your buddies and you start throwing things or you start being loud. The chaperones weren't nice when I was a kid. It was like, hey, knock that shit off. We're here in a public place, or I'm bringing you home. That was like what I'd get, you know? Or you'd get the meanest look in the world, or they take something. Like, you would get damn near shunned. Nowadays, you got to be like, hey, no more of that. Or this is what I think we were we were kind of laughing at. There's these kids, they were asking for um, snacks because we we brought snacks for them you know everyone got one of whatever and they're like oh yeah and we had a lot of extras shout out to uh john for that because they they had extras sometimes you don't get extras on the field trip and that's all you get you know kids are trading like three oreos for one extra sandwich because they want some more protein that was me like i was trying to be like all right i know people like cookies i need to get some protein in me or something like substantial um but these kids actually would come up to, to me and John because we were the ones next to the snacks. Can I have some more? I overheard this guy over here. He's like, yeah, the same boarding school. Yeah, have them as much as you want. But that's how much, that's how it was back then when we were kids. One sandwich, one thing of Oreos or whatever you got. And don't even bother asking. Because then if I, if I give you one more snack, I got to give everybody a snack. When you're just asking for like a like a couple Ritz crackers back then when you're a kid on the field trip. Can I have a couple more crack? Nope. If I give you a couple, I'm going to have to give everybody one. You better just go trade. I, I ain't got nothing to trade. Well, I guess you'll just eat when you get home. <sighs> Them chaperones. We've all had those chaperones who just do not want to give you anything. Can I go to the bathroom? You could wait. Can I get another snack? Nope. Can you watch me go to the store? My mom gave me five dollars. Nope. If I let you go to the store, I gotta let everyone go to the store. Can I go to this exhibit down the road? I've already seen enough dinosaurs. Nope. We're gonna go buy the dinosaur. We're gonna look at the dinosaurs a little bit more, and then we're gonna go. Damn. You know those those damn counselors, man, or the chaperones. They were just regular people. Um, <laughs> you know this is funny. Um. Nobody is more boring. This is, I thought this was funny. You guys may not even think this is funny, but nobody's more boring than the guy who says, yeah, went to all my bills. 
Oh my God. Nothing drives up a conversation more than that. It's like, oh, what you been doing? Oh, paying bills. Like I, whenever I hear anyone say bills, like not Buffalo bills, but like money, financial bills, boring, dude. We all got them. You ain't unique, you know? Oh, you know, how how much was that? Or where'd you get that? Man, I can't afford anything now with all my bills. Oh, it's like the the Charlie Brown music when everyone says brown, uh, bills. Oh, yeah. I wish I could afford that, but my bills, man. We all got bills. You ain't, like, unique over here. Nobody told you to get the 2024 new truck anyway. Don't be coming in here asking and crying around about your bills because we got bills too. You know that guy? Oh, hey, uh, I'd really like to, man, but I got bills. We all got bills, bro. Everybody in this room has a cell phone. Everyone in here has a car, insurance. We all got, you're just saying like the sky is blue, man. <sighs> Nothing dries up a convo more than bringing up bills. Um... What else is going on? Um, oh, yeah. People always ask. What, not people. Always, people don't always ask, but I feel like this is a pretty common question. What would you do if I won the lottery? Definitely, if I won the lottery, I'm buying a, I'm buying a truck or I'm buying a van. And I'm leaning towards the van. A lot of people, you know, oh, you're going to be the guy with the van. Heck, yeah, I'm going to be the guy with the van. If I could fit a piece of plywood in a van, I got the best of both worlds with a van. You know, I got double-edged doors. It's sometimes lower to the ground for me to step up into the van. Not the tallest guy in the world, to be honest. You know, I'm just going to put that out there. Van might be a little bit more accessible. Uh, you could uh, close it and put a bed in there. Um, people say, oh, you can get a truck with the canopy. You're right. That's very true. That is very true. But I, I think I'm leaning a little bit more towards the van. Um, I like the... Yeah, I, I like the van. Yeah, so I'm, I think I'm team van right now. Um, if I see a truck at a good price, though, I was looking at these uh, Jeep. Um, God, I don't remember what it was. Like a Jeep truck. It looked kind of cool. But I'm Toyota guy, dude. I like Toyotas. Um, nothing against America or whatever, you know, but Toyota makes good vehicles. I, I'm riding a uh, Camry right now. And tell you what, I'm, I'm, I like my Camry. You know, I like Camry because it's good on gas. You know, it's also, it looks nice. You know, it's not super fancy, but it, do, it does the job. Um, but you know, when I'm filling up with the Camry, it fills up pretty quick. You know, I go to the travel gas station and I get pretty affordable gas. There's a lot of people for a while that were like, oh, the travel gas station, it's watered down. Dude, I haven't had one problem with my car and it's gas getting filling up there. It's the same gas. If it, maybe it might be cheaper, whatever. It's, it's not ruining nothing here. At least yet. Let's knock on wood. Uh, and some people got diesel. Maybe that, maybe diesel is different. I don't know. But just, you know, your res runner, I promise you, is not being ruined from the gas station. I, 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 I'm going to just put that out there. Your car has 250,000 miles. It is not the gas from the gas station. I'm just going to say that out loud and people may get mad at that. Whatever. Um, but, you know, this is what's funny. Every time I pull into the tribal gas station, I pull in. I'm like looking around for some reason. Who am I going to see now? You know, you have this vibe as soon as you get to the travel gas station. You park. All right. You get out. You kind of look around. You kind of look like you're, you know, you like you're going to see someone. You always do, you know? And I'm like, God, why don't people just mind their own business when they're at their gas station? You know, like you're, you're pumping your gas and you just feel like everyone's watching you. People driving by, people walking by, you know, people going by the liquor store all slow. Like you just feel like you're being watched and you're like, just like almost like looking around. But then as soon as I'm driving by the res, by the res gas station, dude, I'm staring at whoever's in, like, I'm driving like this. The road's right here. I'm driving like this, looking to see who's getting gas. I don't know why, but I do. And uh, it's pretty unique. So, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. It's been 30 minutes. It's been DJP168. Um, if I don't see you next week, I'll see you the next. And uh, if not then, I'll see you next month. Hoyt. <laughs>